My name is Anna Hansen, and I'm the sales director here at Bitespeed. And just give you a little background on what we're going to do. We're going to do what we're calling a demonar. So we know everybody's super busy, and uh, we're going to skip a bunch of the fluff, and we're going to go right into a demo of what our app stream environment looks like, and uh, really focus on answering questions and um, being really specific and purposeful in what the app stream solution can do. Um, I'll be happy to answer. And I've got Lucas Holney here. He's the CTO for Bitespeed and the one that's responsible for actually helping implement the pilot as it um, goes for the schools across the country. We've got, Hello, do you want to introduce yourself real quick, Lucas? Uh, sure, yeah. Um, you kind of did most of it already, but <laughs> yeah. I've been here uh, 16 years and I've been uh, working um, in the background, uh, building our app stream solution. And um, yeah, just working with the schools on getting the environment spun up and um, get everything functioning for the students. And um, happy to help out of this webinar and answer any questions. Awesome. We are also joined by Joe Wakeman. Um, Joe, do you want to tell everybody a little about yourself? Uh, hey, everyone. Uh, I'm Joe Wakeman. I'm the technology director for Nevada Community Schools in central Iowa. Um, we have been using AppStream successfully for uh, for our students and staff for a couple years now. Thanks so much, Joe. Um, and then last but certainly not least, I'm going to introduce you to Trent. And Trent is actually going to give us a demonstration of his environments. Trent, will you tell everybody a little about yourself? Hi, yeah, I'm Trent Mahaffey. I am the tech director for uh, Columbia Unit School District Number 4 in uh, Columbia, Illinois. Um, we're a suburb of uh, St. Louis here and been here about eight years now. And we really like using the SAP stream. It helps us a lot during uh, uh, these COVID times with teaching some of our uh, higher education classes with uh, that the high school students get du dual credit through. That's awesome. So if anybody has any questions during the demo or as we're moving forward, there's a chat or a Q&A button here at the bottom in the chat. You guys can just drop your questions right in the webinar chat. We'll be happy to answer them. And uh, without further ado, if you can start showing us the environment, that'd be great. Thanks, Trent. Yep. Uh, so the first thing uh, the kids will do, they'll come over to your uh, little Google app button here. And when they click that, uh, they'll just scroll down to their CUSD, uh, their app stream. Ours is called CUSD4 uh, uh, app stream. And this is a custom app that you just, uh, Lucas can help build, uh, help you build and get going. And you literally just click on that. And I already have um, the app stream actually open. So at first you'll hit this landing page and then you can pick your, your different app, whichever you want. Um, and then it'll go over and come up like this. And as you can see, this is full AutoCAD running. You do all kinds of little pivoting around and do your drawing. I, uh, I borrowed this from uh, this drawing from a teacher. So I, I don't really know that much about using AutoCAD, but um, all I really can do is do some circles and draw some lines. <laughs> You've surpassed my ability so far. Um, let's see, let me get out of there. And then so this also syncs up with uh, Google Drive. So if I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and open another file here and uh, show you that. So there's Google Drive, my drive. I gotta give it a second to load up the different files. So this, this was kind of a 
well I made by just kind of messing around here. Um, and that's pretty much it. And I, I mean, it's pretty responsive. Um, I, there's really not much latency with it. Is there anything, any, anybody like to add, Anna? Can you go I over think, the yeah. toolbar up on the top, like where the app launcher yep. is and how yeah. you connect the drive and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. So here's the app launcher. Um, we can switch between it different apps. Um, see this one switches windows. Uh, so here's where you would link your Google Drive. Um, I can't demo that process since mine's already linked, but it's really easy. You literally just go in there, hit allow, and it allows your Google Drive access. Um, and once the students do that, um, the first time, then it stays with them for the rest of the time. So there's just, like Trent said, just a couple clicks and, and they're able to access their Google Drive contents within any of these applications. Yep, correct. So yeah, quick question and then in the chat here is, is the Google Drive component using the file stream client or a different mechanism? It's not using a specific client that I know of. It's directly added through Amazon's kind of backend service. Um, so I just specify the, the domain that it's, um, that's able to access it. And then uh, through the um, file window there that uh, Trent was just in, that's where you connect the storage. So I'll have them log in with their Google account. Yep, that's correct, Lucas. Um, it's it's using Google's APIs on the storage backend, so it's not like you need a, a Google Drive application installed on these machines or anything for that to work. It's all it's all native. And same thing for OneDrive. It also supports uh, cloud storage through that. Quick question um, on would throw over a you, Trent. Is what device are you using to run AutoCAD right now with the, with the app stream? Uh, this is a Chromebook. It's a Acer 13 inch, uh, not 13, 14 inch model that our teachers use. Um, it's, it's a lower end spec one. So it's only got four gigs of RAM. Um, it's pretty close to what the kids use. I just like it because it's got the bigger screen. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas, do you want to answer the question on the on-prem licensing server? Yeah, um, I'll just quick add on to the device thing first. It, it will um, support any device type. So if you have a MacBook, you have an iPad, granted a touchscreen might not be great for Autodesk, but um, it will, AppStream will support any device. Um, and for the licensing, um, so the software licensing is still up to the to the district to have. Um, we can help uh, build in some of it. So with Autodesk, we have to use a network license uh, server, um, and we set that up in the background. And we have you export your license files, and we upload them into the server. Um, so Autodesk is typically free for school, so they give you like three thousand concurrent sessions. Um, so that's all handled um, in the background, so you don't have to worry about that. If you're using AppStream for Adobe, that gets a little more complicated. Um, you have to have their cloud per user model set up, and that can be synced to um, Google for um, SAML in that aspect. It can be just Adobe IDs. Um, I believe you can sync your users with Microsoft Azure as well. Um, but every, every piece of software will have its own um, licensing requirement. Did you see that chat, Lucas, that just with the license server in the cloud and not on-prem? Looking at it right now. Um, 
Yes, yeah, it is entirely in the cloud. So that the whole um, app stream service is running in an AWS account that we create for you. So it's, um, you have a virtual private cloud, you have subnets, you have a NAT, an internet gateway, pretty much a whole private cloud network up there. And uh, AppStream runs inside of that. Um, so it's completely closed off from any on-premise environment. Um, they do have the ability to do VPNs into your network. We haven't gone down that road. I don't, um, I don't recommend doing that if you don't have to, but uh, it for Autodesk, we should be able to um, export different license files. They don't limit you um, in that aspect that I've come across. I can do a, a quick screen share too of the available applications we have in our pilot right now. So you guys can see what that would look like. So these are the applications that we currently have available through our pilots. So basically, right, it's the, the main Autodesk um, applications um, and then the main Adobe Cloud, Creative Cloud applications, and then Office 365 as well. So um, one of the cool things with this solution um, is it's got a lot of, a lot of positives. So like right uh, room with computers that may not be able to be social distanced, or if you do social distance them, um, can you have enough for your classroom? Um, with this solution, you can you can run these applications anywhere on any machine, so you're not limited to that that physical space. So um, as long as you're anywhere with an internet connection, kids can run the, these applications. So they're they're doing learning from home. If you're in a hybrid or at home learning scenario, um, they can still run these applications successfully. Um, you're in a situation that you're uh, that you're limited to um, physical space with the lab, so you're limited to scheduling constraints. Um, with this situation, um, you're you're not limited to that physical constraint as long as as long as the students have a device with an internet connection, um, they can run these programs. So it's got a lot of a lot of great positives from that that end. There's a question here for you, Trent. It's more of a question. Um, did you review the Microsoft WVD solution, pros, cons, and a reason for going this route? Uh, we didn't really review any other solutions. Um, we kind of just had to get something going for our college course, uh, dual credit college courses that we had here. Um, and this kind of just fit. And it was, it was a good solution for what we had at the moment. I think one of the unique things about AppStream is it's Google integration, right? I've used a few different platforms um, throughout the years, Citrix, um, uh, VMware View solution. And one of the great things about AppStream is it's just native integration with Google without any kind of add-ons or hacks or workarounds or anything. It's just you know, the authentication through SAML is, is seamless, especially in our case with kids with Chromebooks. They click the link, it automatically authenticates them through their Google account. So it's not this extra account. Um, and then with the Google Drive integration, it, it's not this extra file server that I have to maintain and pay for storage or anything. It's just using the, the, the Google storage that, that we already have. Or if you're a, a 0365 district, you can use OneDrive as well. Um, so it's not this, this, this extra set of overhead um, that you need. So you've got a lot of efficiencies there. Mm -hmm. Thank I'll you. add too, um, with uh, Windows Virtual Desktop, you have a full desktop environment that you have to manage. Um, each user, you'll still have to, you know, fix Windows so they can't open this, they can't get into that, they can't um, browse to this. And um, Amazon's solution with Astream is literally just giving the student the application and giving them a, a launch window for that. There's no nothing that they can do to uh, get in there and screw around with things that they shouldn't be into. And um, I think that's a great point, Lucas, that in my case, I didn't want students to have this extra environment that they had to manage, you know, not an extra desktop, um, not an extra set of admin settings that I needed to push out. Uh, I wanted them to see, they don't know with AppStream that they're running an application somewhere else. As far as they're concerned, they're running the applications on their Chromebook. They don't, they don't really 
put any thought into it's not really running there it's running somewhere else so it's it's a super seamless environment that um works great in that instance thank you joe um lucas you had mentioned we talked we were we were waiting for the bandwidth requirements so thanks for throwing that up there nick um did you you want to talk about the bandwidth requirements at all luke yeah so um amazon does have us page for that. I'm going to paste it in the chat window here, but um, the bandwidth recommendations are kind of based off of what they might require at kind of like the high end of everything. So with graphics applications, they're saying five megabits per second, but that's, that's if you're like in Autodesk and you're drawing some very intensive drawing and it's, there's a lot of, um, traffic that needs to happen back and forth with the clients as to, you know, with what you're doing. Um, but in actuality with um, just basic usage is quite a bit less than that. And I think from a real world perspective, um, I've run this off of my cell phone hotspot in an area that I was lucky to pull a meg or two meg uh, based on signal and I was still able to run the solution. It's very, very um, bandwidth friendly. Yeah, I've heard using it over LTE connections is very doable as well. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm gonna, Kyle wrote a question in this. I'm just gonna read it out loud because I think a lot of people will benefit from this. Um, he said, I've been researching this and found that the requirements for the GPU that it becomes hard to justify over keeping labs if all of our students that need this would be on at the same time. Is there a way to allow students to schedule time can the system be used to scale down after school hours to save money? Lucas, can you talk a little bit about how we help do that on the back end for them with the pilot? Yeah, so right, we we try to work with you as much as you can to make sure that um, the spots are available for when the students need them. Um, so if you have uh, a class that starts at 11 a.m., we'll warm up um what they call the instances um so they're ready by 11 a.m so if you have 25 students that need access to it we'll have 25 spots sitting there waiting for them to pop into it and then you know if it's a an hour class or a 90 minute class uh, we'll scale it back down after that class is over and then you can just have a smaller amount of available spots throughout the day just so if a kid needs to do homework or um you need to catch up on something, whatever it is, they'll be able to get in and use the service. Um, we can set up scaling policies too, so that if uh, if you have five spots that you want to have available throughout the day, um, if 75% of them are full, we can add in another, you know, one spot, two spots, five spots, whatever the number is that we decide um, to be available uh, to the students. So that's, that's something we kind of go th over through our onboarding process and the, um, the setup of it. That's one of the nice things about the managed offering that we've put together here for people is that you don't have to worry about that so much because you are. Um, we'll work with you to set things up and help manage the system and, and get going. Um, Obviously, AppStream, you can go in and you can set it up yourself and, and run through it. A lot of people do, and they're successful with it. It does, I'll tell you from our personal experience, it takes some work getting things set up just right. Um, we actually have uh, one of our current schools was, he set it up himself and had it running, and then just the management of the images and all the stuff he needed to do, um, he switched over to our pilot, but he doesn't have to be in there messing with stuff all the time or keeping things up to date. We just do it for him. So um, hopefully that answers answers that uh, that question there. Well, I, one more thing too with that, yeah. just to make sure there's no confusion. Like if each time a, a student logs in, it, it's running, it's basically opening up a virtual machine for that student. And whether you have one student logging in or 25 logging in, they all have the same amount of resources available to them. They don't all consume from the same resource pool. So it's not gonna get any slower the more students that you have uh, using the service. 
they all have their own unique resources available. I just put in the chat too, we've got a, um, an application for the for the pilot that we're currently running right now and it goes into a little bit about more about the cost and how we're how it's set up you can you can try it with a small batch of hours right away um just to see how it works for your district and um you don't have to buy a ton of hours up front so you can you can start at 2500 hours for 5000 there's no extra setup fees or anything like that um, and you can use the 2,500 hours uh, throughout the year. Um, if you're a, a very large district and you're looking at the cost of this and having anxiety, we can work with AWS and see if there's a possibility of putting together a POC for you guys. They've been um, pretty open to those conversations, so definitely let us know um, what your needs are, and we'd be happy to, happy to help in any way that we can. Any other questions or anything that um, you guys can think of that we may be leaving off? Uh, the billing model. One of the things that uh, we decided to do is AppStream is an incredible solution. And it's not new and it's not even new to EDU, but the way that their billing is set up traditionally is a little painful for e education, especially when you're supposed to plan and budget. So the way that they have it set up, you pay for what you use as you use it with a credit card and it's kind of a surprise every month. So what we've done is sold, we're selling it in packages of hours. So you can forecast what you're gonna need, buy a bundle of hours and just have kind of a fixed cost towards what you're doing and not have to worry as much about uh, image maintenance, et cetera. Any other questions or anything that we haven't covered just yet? Uh, I could talk a little bit about the Google integration. So uh, part of the setup process we also go through is um, like Trent showed, creating that uh, app that uh, shows up for your students. That's a SAML app that gets created in G Suite. Um, and again, we can do the same thing in uh, Microsoft Azure, uh, but we, um, as part of the onboarding process, work with you to get that created and it's assigned, um, the app is assigned per OU or organization wide. And then um, we have a solution where we can um, deploy the access to each user in, the o, um, in your OUs. They have to have a, a custom user attribute applied to each person. Um, and we can autom help you automate that if you have a large um, user deployment that you want to do with that. Thank you, Lucas. Uh, Bryce is asking uh, about pricing if it's based on total hourly usage or if there's a concurrent user count. So the way that we've got things set up right now, it is based on total hourly usage and that's how we're hoping to keep it. Um, but to keep our costs low on the hourly usage, we are gonna need to work with the schools and make sure that the because of the way we're built through Amazon, that the max concurrent users is reasonable and that we're actually keeping it as close as we can. Um, right now, the way that we have it set up, it's totally based on hourly usage and we're just relying on our schools that we're working with to help us keep the max concurrent users to close to what they actually are. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to keep that, that model going. Hopefully that answers your, your question there, Bryce. And I will be sending out an email recording. It'll come out automatically to everyone that attended the webinar. So you'll be able to go back and review this if you would like. Actually, anyone that registered for the webinar, whether you attended or not, will get the recording. Can access to the apps be limited by IP address? I don't believe so, not to my knowledge. Um, the access is gonna be determined through the app that we create. Um, within G Suite or Azure. So Azure is a little bit nicer because you can um, do it by security group. Um, G Suite doesn't have a group-based way to do it right now. Um, you just have to uh, give it access to your entire organizational unit that you want, but that doesn't necessarily mean every student in that OU can access or open the app. They have to have a, a user a tribute applied to them that gives them the authentication to app stream. Any other questions or anything you guys? 
We're doing really good on our 30 minutes. Okay, uh, question from Bryce. Does each user pull against the hours or all at once? For instance, students in class, do each of them pull time from the pool of hours or does anyone pull the same amount of time? Do you wanna answer that, Lucas? Yep, yeah, uh, so yeah, each each person that logs in consumes one hour. So they're they're unique to the to the user. Um, and that's just how Amazon charges for the service. So if you have five users using it, they're going to get charged five hours out of the pool. And then we can set again, help set access control for that. So um, we can set max session durations for 60 minutes so they don't go past that hour. Um, we can set disconnect timeout. So if they sit idle, it'll boot them out so they're not um, consuming uh, too much um, availability so all the students can hop in. And that's where the hour calculator will help you. So if you um, go to bicepeed.com slash app stream, click on the calculator link, um, it'll help you kind of figure out like if you have uh, 25 students using it for an hour a day and you maybe figure an hour homework in a week, how many hours per week that'll be. And then calculating that out to your monthly usage and then how many hours would take you to get through the school year. One thing that I'll point out on that um, application calculator is that a lot of people are looking at it and running classroom hours. If the students aren't actually logged into the application, they're not using hours. So if you have a teacher that teaches a class for an hour a day, five days a week, and two of those days are lecturing. So you want to kind of calculate according to how the instructions being done. We have a lot of people that are buying smaller bundles of hours just to kind of figure out what usage would be because the investment's smaller up front. So you can get in and kind of see what adoption looks like and what true cost will be um, based on teaching and coursework and how it's applied homework as well. Well, we really appreciate all of you guys joining us and thank you Trent and Joe and Lucas for jumping on and, and answering questions and um, if you guys have any any follow up or anything you can you can reach out to me or Lucas. Um, Lucas has thrown his email into the chat it's L Holney so L H U L N E at bitespeed.com. You also can go, like Lucas mentioned earlier, to bitespeed.com forward slash app stream. And we'd be happy to, to jump on a call with you and answer any questions that are really specific to your own environment. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Anna.